if you have an interest in horses and love learning more about horses, the horse industry, teaching, or even managing your own horse business, then you're in the right place. We would love you to join us on our mission, which is to improve the lives of horses around the world through the education of riders, handlers, and trainers. So get comfortable, listen in, and enjoy. This is another of our popular Listener's Choice interviews, which we're playing over the weekend. We've chosen the most popular interviews for you to select the Listener's Choice winner. If you're not sure how the Listener's Choice competition works, have a look at horsechats.com slash choice for the rules and the leaderboard. If you have the same vision as International Horse College, which is to have a world where people safely appreciate, respect and enjoy their horses, and the horses appreciate, respect and enjoy their people, then have a look at their website, internationalhorsecollege.com, registered training organisation 31352. Our guest today is Charlotte Peterson. Charlotte was born in Denmark. She became a Danish riding master and she's competed to Grand Prix. She's a dressage specialist, rider, trainer and coach. How are you, Charlotte? I'm good, thank you very much, yes. Excellent. Charlotte, we're going to throw you in straight up with a favourite quote, and I know you've got one for us. What is it? What would you like to um, say about it? Well, my favourite quote would be, like, just do it, like the Nike ad. Yes. Um, I think uh, you just have to jump in and, and do as well as you can. Yep. No point just not, not uh, trying the, the best you can do. Yeah. And that, I think that's a, I like that quote because um, you, you can do everything, like if you just put your mind to it and you just do it. Now, tell me, did you have that quote or that philosophy before Nike came out with theirs? I don't know. I can't remember. <laughs> I don't, it's just something I've always thought of, always liked that quote. Yes. And, and I think um, I even said that something, just do it to my students, you know, yes. sometimes. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. If I tell them to do something and nothing happened, I'd just do it. So, yeah, <laughs> I suppose okay. that, that comes out like that. Yeah. Okay, okay. So thinking about the first time when you very first started with horses, do you have an early memory, you know, just something that you can remember happened or something you did when you started with horses? Um, yeah, I started when I was 11, which is many years ago now. Okay. Yep. <laughs> and I wasn't allowed to, where the riding school was, the guy who owned the riding school, you weren't allowed to start riding before you were 11. So I was just hanging out my birthday and then finally <laughs> it came and okay. I got allowed to and went up there because my friend was riding she was obviously older than me mm. and when I got there I think I just I don't know I just loved it straight away everything else I had done in those first 11 years yes. faded away compared to the riding so and I remember my um, the first instructor I have he was from the army and uh, I was in the stables I had then where the horses were tied up in stalls you know yes. so there wasn't much room in the breezeway. There wasn't a lot of room. And I was standing there in the breezeway with my hands in the pocket and suddenly I heard this man yell at me, what are you standing there for with your hands in the pocket? Because you should always be, if something happens with the horses, he meant, yes, you know. Yes, you should. You couldn't just stand there doing nothing or, or put your hands in the pocket if a horse kicked out. And yeah. I can I can see it from me now. And the, just the discipline he gave me right mm -hmm. from when I was 11, has just stuck to me all the time. Yes. Yes, because some 11-year-olds just would not come back again if someone yelled at them like that. You know, they'd just be insulted that someone yelled at them. So you're obviously the right person. To yeah, they would now. They, I think I didn't. I, I knew what was happening. Yes. 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 And I only learned by that. And I can, yes, it was amazing. Yeah, I can see him from me still. And yeah, I think that yeah. was the first main 10 years of my riding, it was with the instructors from the army and that was discipline, that's for sure. You yeah, didn't talk yeah. back to them or wanted your way. <laughs> you just did what they said and you got on the horses, that's it. Yeah. Okay. Okay, now going from there, you know, because you sort of, mm -hmm. you know, went on with horses to become a Danish riding master, were you always going to do that, to be a coach? Was there another type of career? I think you did talk about wanting to be a vet. Was you know, just tell us a little bit about that. Yes, I did. My dad um, was a vet, so I always had the same love for horses, for animals, uh, as yes. he did. Uh, I think I was probably the most animal lover in my family. Um, but my brothers and um, were both academics, and I think that my 
dad wanted me to be a vet and wanted to be me a bit academic, but I wasn't very good at school, <laughs> really. Um, I just loved going to the horses, and I wasn't thinking about doing it when I was younger, but there wasn't a lot of money in it then, and it wasn't yes. as um, good then. So I did a few. I, I tried to get better marks from school, doing uh, extra studies and things like that. Um and I went to end up studying geology, um, biology at some point because mm-hmm. I thought maybe that's what I want. Um, and um, I then gave up the horses for six months and to go to uni, but I just couldn't give it up. Uh-huh. And then after that, I decided that was it. You know, I might as well move back home and because I, I did my apprenticeship near my parents' place. So yeah, yeah. yeah. So you only actually went to uni for six months. Yes, I mm-hmm. did. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> I just, it wasn't for me, no, not really. Some people don't even get there, yeah. They say, I'll just take 12 months off before I go back to uni and then they don't go back to uni. No. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, no, I, I didn't do that. You know, I, I, <laughs> I think I knew very quickly. It was, And then as soon as I started my uh, baritership, so I should call it, or yes. master's, but I knew that was the right thing, yes. Yeah. It was hard work, yeah. but it was the right thing to do, yes. Mm-hmm. So if someone else wanted to, you know, do their bride or work in the horse industry, become an instructor, become a, you know, competition rider, what sort mm. of horse skills do you think they need, you know, to um, to commence in the career? Well, um, I would say they have to have a tough skin to put up with lots of different yep. things. Um uh, like uh, and good people skills, you have to be able to talk to people. Yes. Uh, and and sell yourself a little bit, I suppose. Yep. And be able to buy a lot of animals, of course. That would yes. be a very big thing. Patience, perseverance with the horses, patience with people, <laughs> more than the horses, I would say. Sometimes, some of the people you have to work with, uh, you have to be good at work at having. Uh, staff being able to manage every uh, like a whole stable full of horses and people with their st- with your staff I certainly uh, that's a challenge can be a challenge I think but if you really want to do it I think it's an amazing job and you have your hobby as your job it's you can it's just a lifestyle really I think it's not oh, really a job to, yeah I was just going yeah. to ask you what's the best thing about working with horses and having a career in the horse business. Well, it's it's a lifestyle. I think I'm, I just love it. I can do my own hours. Like you, you still hard work, you know. Mm. And you work with animals. I, I love animals. Um, mm. And also working with like-minded people. You know, go to come along, going to the comps and and see all my uh, other colleagues riding and and talking to them. And if I've just been in Sydney at the CDI and just you know watching all the other guys ride, it's great. Yes, I love that. Yes, yes. yes. I, I, yeah. I really, and it's not—it's not work for me then. When no, I do that, yeah. no, as you say, you've got your hobby that you get paid for. It's your job. Yeah, yes, yeah. no, no, yeah. it's great. Yes, what, what a lot of other people would have is their hobby. You get to have it all the time. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah like it can, you know, like any job can be hard. You know, sure. or you can get a little tired of it, but <laughs> it generally, I think it's an amazing thing to be able to do. Yes, tell us then about you know someone who may have influenced you and helped you learn more about horses and even might have helped you make career choices around your career? Who, who would that be? Um, oh, well, I've had a lot of coaches in my time. Yep. Uh, but what, one who stands out is many years ago, uh, uh, that was before I did my apprenticeship. I saw the world with him just as a, uh, you know, uh, just learning from him, not, not mm-hmm. as an apprentice. Yes. And that guy called Knud Dam, he passed away now. He was. Um, he does. He did came from the army too, and he had that discipline too. Um, and and I I just learned so much from him. Like just the way he always, even if he didn't have a lesson, he would always watch you. Even if it was other people there, he would always come and then say, "Oh, you should do this and this and this." So I saw you ride. You were not doing that right. Mm-hmm. There was always he'd always had an eye on on everybody and everything. Yeah. And he some made me want to to be able to go on to be um, an instructor like he was. Mm-hmm. Uh, he would be very tough on your, on, on the rider, like wanted to have do it the right way and, and sitting right and all of those things. Yep. Plus, but he would be, you know, um, not never tough on the horse in that sense. Yes, yes. Yeah, he would want to best out of both the horse and the rider, but he was just always amazing. And he was always, uh, what do you call it, um, calm, you know, mm-hmm. whatever happened, 
in any situation where any horse, you would always be calm and relaxed and, and the horses would always work beautifully under you and the riders too because they just, mm-hmm. it's always a nice environment. And I, I think I've some, loved that and had that environment. I like that that's a good environment to work with with my students plus the staff I have and things like that. And it's not, oh, now, now she comes and they run away. You know? <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, now I've some learned that from him. It was fantastic. Yes. Yeah, yeah, good. Tell us then about any horses that you think have influenced you. I had a few who influenced me, I think, mm-hmm. when I think about it. I had my first horse, Othello, Othello I think you call it out here. I call it Othello. Uh, many years ago when I just was 13, uh, you know, pleaded with my mum and dad to get a horse and my dad had no problem. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. So he, he, that horse definitely shaped. I could, I did both show jumping and hunting and dressage on him. I could, so he was amazing. So he, he some kind of started me on the competition scene yes. and doing quite well with him, both show jumping and dressage. How long did you have him for? You got him when you were 13. Oh, uh, I had him for years. He was about 10 maybe when I got him. Yep. I, I used to ride him for some people who I owned him and then they ended up selling him to me, mm-hmm. uh, to my parents. Uh, uh, and then he was probably 22, 23 when he passed away. We had him at, okay. we at that stage, lived at, in a, just outside uh, Holstable where I come from. Yep. In When we had stables there, so, so we had him at home, yep. which was lovely, yep. yeah. Yep. Yeah. So he certainly shaped my life. And then I think the first horse I had out here, one of the first horses I had out here with, together with another girl called Diana, was a Carrillo, which was a Palomino Arab cross, mm-hmm. warm blood, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he was beautiful, beautiful looking horse. And he was the first horse I ever got to Grand Prix. Yes. You know, yes. So I trained him I the whole way up there myself. Yep. Um, yep. And he was a like, bit difficult. At some point, gave up on him and just, jumped him because he was so spooky and <laughs> narrow <laughs> yeah. but then again just just do it and you guys just kept going because I didn't have anything else at that point mm-hmm. when I came out here um, and I got him to Gumphrey yeah and then my horse uh, come to me which I had Susanna uh, Clark owns she bought him for me years uh, 2006 okay. and he got me to Gumphrey like very competitively out here so he, he was uh, amazing yes he was a beautiful horse that was a Real horse, that one. Okay, <laughs> that yeah. was a super duper horse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's old, like he's old now, and just sunk retired and mm-hmm. gets ridden a little bit. Yes, mm-hmm. I would say those three. Mm-hmm. Okay. What do you think? If you talk about your proudest moment, what do you think that would be? Competition wise, you mean? Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, I suppose, well, I yeah. don't know because you know sometimes people will say a competition, and <laughs> others will say something entirely different. So you don't think about what would be your proudest moment. I would say two for competition, and then I have maybe a few for other um, for the young riders who have won the Arkin Challenge for me. What mm-hmm. uh, my students, uh, like Joe Clark, won it. She was the first one, I think, uh, who won that. That was very exciting. Just being able to help the kids, um, you know, get on the other horse. They had to change horses. Yes. So you really had to help them how to ride the other. And they only had ten minutes. Yeah. Uh, so I was very proud of, of Joe and I had Kylie also and when they put it put pretty I helped uh, going uh, winning those classes so that was very amazing mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. then I have I won the 1996 oh god so many years ago now uh-huh. <laughs> everything uh, on a, a horse called Gumbo his name was Exceptional Value and he was absolutely stunning uh, I won the Advanced Championship at the Nationals in yeah. Tasmania Yep. Uh, that was uh, yeah. I was very proud of that because he was a could be quite a difficult horse, but he was amazing. Unfortunately, he had a heart murmur, so he had to be put down later. And then I won. Um, I think probably one of the biggest win I've had was the Grand Prix Special at the Nationals in 2009. On uh, come to me to yeah. That was, it was uh, and again, good company and all like his Ryan and all the other good riders. So mm-hmm. that was very exciting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Susanna yeah. loved that too. So, yeah, that was nice. Just thinking about people that you're coaching now, you know, and some of your own students and people that you go out when you go to competitions, what do you think that, that is a general tip, you know, that you see is a bit of a mistake that people make or, you know, something that they could use within their training? What would you say to that? Um, I would say that the mistakes... Most a lot, some people, a lot of people, I think, back out here is going up the grades a little bit too quickly. Mm-hmm. 
um, they uh, kind of think about them, all the movements, teach the horse a lot of the movements, how part, leg gilding, all those things, before they really have the horse enough through working on the basics and working on getting the horse working better from behind and things like that, where they then go out and do novice and then they think, oh, now I can do elementary because I've mm-hmm. done a little bit of novice. Um, when they get to the next level, medium, advanced, then the wheels tend to fall off a little bit because they haven't really kept working enough on the basic work. Yes. And, yeah. and, and working within the movements and getting them better instead of just like, like do all the test movements. I think a lot of people, to me, out here do a, get a little bit stuck in that way of just uh, going from one level to the other without really thinking about how the horse is, is going and then if you are ready for that level. So would that be like working more on the quality of the work rather than just doing the movements and going through the grades? Yes, yeah, uh, yeah exactly. Uh, it's like I think some, they don't work enough on the co- quality, like just mm-hmm. getting the trot better, like doing a little bit of the boring stuff where you're <laughs> the horse has to go better and sometimes not getting the horse when you have to get them better they get a little bit more goy so they don't tend to go there because okay. it gets a little bit scary if, yeah, yeah. Uh, because the horse if, if they do come more through and get more quality in their ba- in their guides then they do get a little bit stronger of course so the horses you know, people can then feel that they get a little bit out of control Yes. But I think that's a big difference from here to Europe where people get to that point and they go there, yeah, yeah where we sometimes yeah. don't go there, yeah. And mm. just playing it safe. And I suppose if there's more people in Europe who are already going there, they're more, more models, more mentors for young people coming up, aren't they? Mm. Yes, absolutely. You know, like you have so many good instructors over there, so they all, you know, you see that all the time. Where you're here, you don't see it quite as much, you know. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Because we haven't got the same instructors and the distance to go to lessons. Like nobody in Europe would ride very much on their own. When I was training at home, you always had our own instructor there all the time. And even if you didn't have a lesson, you would be yelled at anyway. Yes. <laughs> so they would yes. see you, you know. Yes. Uh, so you would always, that, that way, get better. I think but here people are getting a little quick to get, oh, I want to go to FEI so I can be an FEI rider. Mm-hmm. Sometimes mm-hmm. that's not just enough mm-hmm. I, I think yes well, that's what I would say so work on the basics definitely yeah, yeah so that's the message that you'd like to give people is work on the basics work more on the quality rather than just teaching the movements and going up through the grades yeah absolutely yeah. Uh, and work your horse like some horses learn to work your horse some horses would work five days a week some works four days a week some need you know go out once a week twice a week so work on those things instead yes. of just thinking about getting up to the next level, and okay. then you will get quicker up the levels when you do it like that, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think, mm-hmm. yeah. If you're an equestrian coach or a horse riding instructor, or even if you aspire to be one, have a look at the free video series for horse riding instructors on the Horse Chats website. Go there now. Have a look, horsechats.com. Okay, then. Now, have you got a book that you'd like to recommend for our listeners? I, I love Harry Bolt's book, The Dressage Horse. Yes. I think that that's an amazing book. But you can both get a big version of it, which is really beautiful with lots of pictures and things like that. Yep. Uh, and a smaller one version. Um, and, and I think he, you can really learn from that book. He, he explains things very well. Yep. And he, uh, there's drawings and, and like he talks right from the lower level right up to the highest level. Okay. And what, uh, yeah, the, and there's another uh, lastly, ten, and I can't remember. I'm not not home in in Macedon, so I can't yes, yes. remember the title of the book. But I think I spoke to you about that last time. Okay. Is that breaking in dressage and jumping? Yes, that's the one. Okay. Yes. And who wrote that one? I think his name was Lastly Tender, mm-hmm. which is a Swedish uh, instructor, also from the army. I think years ago, it's like over thirty years ago or more. That that old that book, yep. um, but I just found it. It's I've used it all all my horse life, uh, riding life, uh, to go back to. And again, he he would he would write things what could go wrong, how to fix it, and how it has to feel, or what it should look like. Okay. And and that would be both show jumping, dressage, um, everything. Yeah, right up to country from from a very uh, low level right through. And he would have 
drawings, like a little bit like Harry Ball's book, to uh, where there's drawings of footfalls of the horse and and where they should be. So that, okay. that's that's one of the best books I've ever read. <laughs> okay, we'll have to have a look for that and see if we can put it on a recommended book. So that's good. Yeah, yeah. you should actually. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We've had the dressage horse a couple of times, you know, from Harry Bolt. I just don't know if we've had the breaking in dressage and jumping yet. No, you're probably not, but I, no. I can um, I, will, okay. I can send you the details of it when I get home. Please, yeah. please. And is it in English? Uh, no, this one is in Danish, but it <laughs> might be in English. Um, well, so I'll just maybe I can translate it. That's yeah. okay. What we'll do yeah. is we'll put it on your page, which will be horsechats.com slash Charlotte Peterson. So yes. um, if the listeners want to have a look and if we can find an English version, we'll certainly put it up there. Yeah, We'll put the Swedish version up as well, you know, just for yes. the people who'd like to have a listen, you know, or like to have a look at that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Charlotte, what are you looking forward to now? You know, over the next 12 months, two years, what have you got students coming on, horses coming on? Tell us what you're doing. Yeah, I've got um, well, I've got um, a new girl working for me um, and she has a very nice thoroughbred which she's doing Chris and George into one on, so I hope we can train her right up to Grand Prix, so I'm mm-hmm. looking forward to that. Good. And I have got two very good horses now myself. Uh, i got my own mare, which I own, her name is uh, Hill Cottage Jasmine, and she's actually ready to do Grand Prix now, or Inter 2, and I'll do Inter 2 first on her. Mm-hmm. And I'm really looking forward to riding Grand Prix with her the next few years and see how she goes. Okay. Uh, I think she's quite exciting, uh, but she's a little bit uh, naughty sometimes, but he's, yes. he's, she's very, very talented. You know, she has been a big challenge. Yeah. I've had the girls help, had to help me with her, riding her when she was younger, but she's really settled down now and... Uh, it's lovely, yeah. And then I have a beautiful stallion, which I own in the partnership or syndicate with uh, two other girls. Mm-hmm. And I bought him last year. I trained him since he was four. Okay, what's his name? Oh, his name is Bauernhorn's Diamond Dancer. He's imported from Denmark. Yep. A, f- a friend of mine imported him when he was four, and then she had to sell him last year. Mm-hmm. And I bought him with these two girls. Yep. And he's eight, and he's just gone to... Prince and George. I went to the CDIs recently, and he placed in the Prince and George CDN up there, and then he advanced. Okay. And he good. will be ready to do Prince and George into one now the next year. Mm-hmm. I've been mm-hmm. taking him quite slowly. He's really easy to train, so I've taken him slowly, just taking my time. Yep. Last yep. year he didn't hardly compete because I just wanted to train, and I had to get finances to buy him and all that before sure. I wanted to try, uh, take him out. Uh, and he he's an amazing horse. Yeah, beautiful stallion. He has a fantastic temperament. He is for a stallion. He's he's amazing, yes, and, and he's beautifully looking. He used to <laughs> the mare is too, but she's very big. Where he's really nice and dainty and moves really nice and easy. So they're yeah. quite different, both of them. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. And then I have a few students who are coming along quite well, yeah. and especially some of my young riders. I've got three or four young riders um, who are right up doing like inter school and young rider classes, CDI classes. Mm-hmm. Um, into one Chris and George, um, and they're all, all of them are really exciting girls to work with. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I'm looking forward to see what, what happens with them. Yeah. Okay. Okay. They'll be busy. It'll be a busy few years. Yes. 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 Now, your philosophy with horses, do you think you can sum it up just into, you know, a couple of sentences? Well, I think um, getting people to um, improve themselves all the time. Um, to get them out of their comfort zone again we were talking about that getting the horses to to work more through and things like that yes um and and i don't mean that everybody has to uh everybody has to go out and compete or anything i don't think i think it's important that every time they ride the horse they can do better yep not just kind of uh be a little bit in the stand still and not wanting to improve mm-hmm. I, I try to install that and that's all all my lessons are I like they wanted to improve, and, and um, so there's a lot more to go in in every per, in every partnership with a horse. Uh, so keep improving on on those things. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that would be I would say. Okay, so always training the horse to the best of their ability. Then yes, plus the rider. Um, yeah, getting getting a little bit out of their comfort zone. And as I say, not just for competition, but for general, so the horse can get better and they can get better. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Charlotte, what's the best way for people to contact you? 
Um, I don't know, my email, which is hillcottage at live.com.au or on my uh, phone, which is 0418597999. That's the easiest way to get me. I'm not so good on Facebook and that. <laughs> uh-huh, that's okay. And yeah. for those people who missed that, just go to Horse Chats and horsechats.com slash Charlotte Peterson or go to horsechats.com, search for Charlotte or search for Peterson, and it's P-E-D-E-R-S-E-N. Okay, thanks, Charlotte. Very, very much appreciate your time today. Great talking to you, and um, we certainly will be looking forward to you competing Jasmine in Grand Prix and um, your Diamond Dancer yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much for having me. It's been, it's been nice. I like that. Good. Well, very good. Hopefully we'll catch up with you again sometime soon. Yeah, and I'll make I'll put the um, book on your side too. Please, yes. Last and tender. Thank All you. right. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. Bye bye. Bye. If you've enjoyed this chat, then please comment, rate, and subscribe. If you'd like any changes or recommendations for guests, then please contact us through horsechats.com. And while you're online, have a look at the government accredited courses at internationalhorsecollege.com. Registered Training Organisation 31352. Remember that our comments and instructions are general in nature and do not take into consideration your individual horses or your individual ability and circumstances. If you enjoyed this podcast, then please leave your comment below.